The Prusa Core 1, Prusa's stab at the new ever expanding Core XY market for hobbyists and consumers who are into 3D printing. And let me tell you folks, I have opinions. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank and today we are talking about the Prusa Core 1. Now, there was a little bit of a previous video. I did talk about this machine. It was a little while ago. It was this video. I don't remember the title of it, but I kind of went over some of the machines I was currently testing, like the Ender 5 Max, which isn't sitting there anymore. I don't know why I pointed there, and the Prusa Core 1. So, before we get into anything, I do want to state that this video isn't sponsored. This video isn't sponsored by Prusa. There was no contract, there was no obligation, there was no, hey Frank, we will send you a printer if you give us a video. Nothing. They sent me this printer to use because they wanted my opinion on it, they wanted me to use it, and I am putting this video out because I want to. So all of the opinions, all of the words spoken here are 100% mine and no one else's and no one has control or say over that. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about the printer. Now I know in the beginning of the video I said this was Prusa's first stab. No, obviously there's the Prusa XL, that is a Core XY style printer, but at its max it's over $4,000. This is for the desktop hobbyist who just wants to get into 3D printing. So what do you get? Sitting online right now as I film this video, it is $949 for the kit, which you will get the parts to the printer, and then you have to build and assemble. But Prusa's instructions are literally like the best out there, plus tutorial guides and stuff online. So if you're new to the hobby, but you're not too uh, sure if you can build it, I think you'll be fine. If you can build a Lego kit, you can you can build these types of 3D printers. They're not that bad. Or you can spend $1,199, $1,200 to get the pre-assembled version, which is what this one was. You take it out of box, you pull all the foam out, you put it on the desk, plug it in, turn it on. It auto calibrates. It'll take you about 10 to 15 minutes to go from unboxing to it actually putting out its first print, which is very impressive. These are the things we expect with modern 3D printers. I don't want to sit there for an hour trying to calibrate something for it to just, I don't know, it just ruins the experience. I want the thing to work now. Also, later in the video, I am going to go on a little bit of a tangent about a camera or a lack thereof. The initial units did not include little cameras inside of them. But if you order online right now, you do get the whole Prusa Core 1 and or kit, pre-assembled, whatever, and it comes with a free camera. That's a $40 value. Mine doesn't have a camera and it was a little annoying. Size-wise, the Core 1 sits at 250 by 220 by 270 millimeters. That's the build volume inside of it. I don't know how you want to visualize that. It can print like this. Yet, look, rock it. It, it, it's actually, it can print pretty big, but it is still on the small side of 3D printing, but not bad. It has an LCD touchscreen. It's not powered on right now. I'll go through some of the features a little bit later. It has a, a Wi-Fi module. It has all the standard things you'd expect from a free 3D printer, um, a filament runout sensor, has some lights inside. It's all self-enclosed. It has some vents. It does the 3D printing thing. The nozzle gets up to 290 Celsius. The bed gets up to 120 Celsius, and it is a heated chamber. And that is one of the cool things about the Core 1. It gets up to 50 five degrees Celsius, which is required for certain um, types of higher end materials. You need to heat the chamber, active chamber heating, and this has it. It can do all the standard filaments, PLA, PTG, um, flexibles, PCs, and if you add the, uh, the, the certain filters you need to get, if you are printing inside, then you can do things like ASA and ABS and nylons, the things that off gas. So if you are going to be printing those types of materials, do your research because that stuff can be toxic and make sure you either have the HEPA filter upgrades or it's like in a vented area in a garage and you're being safe. Don't just get the printer, throw ABS at it, leave the door open and take a nap next to it. It's bad. Now, one of the marketing things about this printer was it was upgradable. It has all these little cutouts on the side and you can print doors and little holders and contraptions and do all this cool stuff with it. But that's just, that's just 3D printing as a whole. Prusa has always embraced that more than some more common companies like Bamboo or Creality where like they still want you to upgrade the printer to kind of make it your own, which I think is pretty cool. Now, I'm not going to sit here and read you the entire brochure. If you want to go learn more about the printer, go to the website, read the thing. Prusa has great media out about this thing. It was a shocker when it was released. I was literally in Germany at Formnext when this thing just appeared and it was really cool to see the first units. It was also really funny to see people on Facebook and in the Prusa groups and bamboo groups already dogging on the printer, even though it had just been released in Germany and they knew nothing about it. I love the internet sometimes, don't you? Anyway, let's talk about the user experience, the pros, and then we'll talk about the cons. And then we're going to talk about about the print quality and what I got off of this thing after a couple months and uh, what I recommend it. So I'm gonna clear all of this off. So let's just take a look at the core one and what you get and what's kind of on the inside. Uh, you get the 3D printing handbook, which gives you all the information you need 
on the printer and how to calibrate it and set it up and unbox it. You get some accessories, you get a couple more accessories, some lube and some extra bushings and screws to actually do attachments and add-ons. You get two nozzles and well, you get a 3D printer. The lighting inside this thing is beautiful. You can see the hot end here has, has a little bit of a little bit of stringing on it from some prints. It's been beat up. The door does open all the way and it is not glass, it is plastic. This way it's not gonna shatter or be, you know, uh, but you, you can't pull an Uncle Jesse. If you know, you know. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I just broke the glass door off of the printer. <laughs> Pretty standard style hot end with the little catch release on the side for filament, and then you can just clip it back together. And the standard Prusa ecosystem with the touchscreen. For some reason, I like using the knob. I don't know. I always forget that it's touchscreen. I guess I'm just used to using this. But you obviously have your print, you have your preheat. You can preheat any filaments. You can load, you can unload, go back and forth. Uh, it has full control systems and calibrations. Like it's it's a really smart printer. Tons of different settings you can cycle through. Um, I obviously don't have a camera. You can put it in stealth mode, which makes it a little bit quieter. It has the expansion for the multicolor MMU unit, which I do have, but I never set up. Sorry, sue me. Network, Wi-Fi, firmware updates, all the fun stuff. Now, as far as the user experience goes, it was great. Like I said before, it was very easy to unbox and set up, and it does its own auto little calibrations. So you're not gonna have any issues with that, especially if you get the pre-assembled version. Some of the things I was not the biggest fan of with this is one, filament jams. It was rather annoying if I had to actually get in there. This top lid does not come off. Off unless you unscrew it. I actually had to go and unscrew it a few times because getting to the filament tube, I it's not the most comfortable reaching my hand in here and this isn't a quick pop off lid. It would be nice if this just came off. There's no reason this needs to be bolted down. It could be a lid like literally every other printer here and you could just take it off and put it back on. It does have a neat little vent in there though, which is, you know, that can still be retained, but having to pop this off to get better access to the hot end was a little bit annoying. And I started to get nozzle cleaning issues after a uh, pretty severe nozzle blowout, um, which I haven't had a nozzle blowout in a long time. You might be able to still see there is some filament there. Uh, there definitely was a leak. I cleared it, it hasn't happened since, but randomly now I will get a nozzle cleaning error, which is weird because it doesn't have a camera. So how does it know? And then randomly I would have a couple issues with sending G code over Wi-Fi where it would be a non-start G code. It would sit in this perpetual state of heating up and then it would error temp out because the printer wouldn't let it sit there hot preloaded. It would then temp out and turn off and cool down. And then it would say print failed or print, you know, print error. Not sure why that's happening. I can't replicate it, but it would just randomly happen. Now I know some of these might seem like little piddly stuff that I'm complaining about. Oh, that's not that big of a deal. So what if the lid, so what if it has an occasional error? Other printers have occasional errors and you're right. They do. These are just the, these are first world problems. We've gotten so good at 3D printing and ma we're making 3D printers now that we can start to complain about those little things because if I'm getting 10 errors on this every, you know, I'm getting one error every 10 prints on this, but I'm getting one error every 100 prints on another one, that's gonna start to stand out and oh, I don't wanna deal with this when I know the printer next to it might actually just kick off a print. But I think it's because this is a very early unit as well. I know the Wi-Fi is up, uh, the, the firmware is updated, but I know other people are having great success with this printer. So maybe it's just a one-off thing. It just could just be a weird unit, but when it is printing, it prints really well and that's what I wanna show you next. Now, let's talk about the print quality. First up is the Armored Alpaca, a Prusa staple, and this was printed in the Galaxy Black Prusa Mint. Any files that are printed are either the stock files from the um, USB that came with the printer, or I use Prusa Slicer and all of their stock profiles and settings, but this thing came out really nice. Cute. Next up was this overhang test where it just prints with this attached to the build plate and it came out really nicely showing how well it can do overhangs, which is actually really impressive. Next up was this supportless dice tower. This thing is beautiful and I'm really glad I used this uh, galaxy silk purple Prusa Mint. And uh, apparently there's somewhere where a benchy sits. It sits like over here and here somewhere, but the quality came out absolutely incredible. No notes. This is a good solid 3D print. And the last stock print was this Prusa rocket engine. It is scaled up. It is a larger model meant to show off the core one size and scale and i just again it came out absolutely flawless this is a really cool print on any printer because it uses no supports and you can just fire this off exactly like this and you have a little rocket ship next up i wanted to start testing just different materials and filaments so i used this really nice rainbow filament and this really pretty rose um, the color gradient transition perfect and that has a lot to do with the spool and the way it was wound but this came out very very nice this really nice copper brown wood 
skull thing. I don't know, I printed it for my nightstand. And then recently, this adorable fox, and I colored the eyes in with a Sharpie, Sumi. Um, this is like a copper silk filament, and it came out really, really, really good. It's adorable. Now, I got this printer to do Iron Man stuff and cosplay stuff, and if you're watching my channel, you probably did too. So I ran some silk red PLA through it, and I wanted to see how it handled details, and turns out, it handles them very, very nicely. This was a 0.16 millimeter layer height, and that is just absolutely beautiful, but silks are meant to look good, and uh, this one pulled it off well. This is the same mask, I just haven't taken the supports off, and this is with a Prusa Silver. It's not as shiny, so you can definitely see minor imperfections a little more because it's just not kicking the light back at you. But support removal, pretty good. The, the stock profiles on uh, Prusa Slicer are really good. And I printed some cosplay pieces for an Iron Man suit. And this was just some random Sunlu filament that I had lying around, nothing special. I didn't dry it out. It's been around for probably years. Everything came out really good on a draft quality. It did get some weird color differentials near the top here. You can see, I think it's as it sped up, it started to finish this print and it definitely changed the color as it sped up. It's a lot more noticeable on this black forearm right up here. The color started to shift as the print started to finish. Not an issue if I'm gonna be sanding and painting everything anyway. Way, but it is just something to note. It's an odd thing that happened that I've never had happen on another printer. And again, this was just all standard quality. I was pumping these out as a draft and I made sure to label the parts so I knew which ones because there are a lot of parts to this suit. But everything is coming out really smooth. I'm happy with it. And I wanted to branch out a little bit and start printing some Pet G. Now this was printed really rough and quick, flat down like that. Um, it came out okay. So I sent this adorable little turtle. And again, this is Prusa Pet G, fresh from the roll with Prusa Slicer and Prusa Settings. And it didn't really do that great. It had some weird, some weird issues on the neck here. The support interface wasn't great. It was really kind of a pain to pull off. It was supposed to be printed at a very high quality, but it just didn't handle this Pet G that well. I actually left this one on the turtle just to try to pull it off. And again, it had the same issues with the overhangs here on the neck that the other one had. So like it, it printed and it's good, but it just didn't come out that great. It did print these ghosts a lot better. I totally forgot to turn on supports for this. So the hands didn't come out well. So maybe it was just that turtle, but this came out a lot shinier and nicer. Um, since there were no supports, the bottom came out a little weird because, but it, it, I mean, it handled that overhang. But what's interesting is it didn't handle the overhang on the Pet G nearly as well as it handled it on that PLA disc. And then finally in Pet G, this absolutely adorable pumpkin. I still need to print the stem, but this is just, he's just so happy to be here. Give him a kiss. Who's the cutest? Yes, you are. Wow. And now the part I've been actually looking forward to the least, uh, the general verdict and recommendation about the Prusa Core 1. And I wish it was better. I was excited about this printer. I'm still excited about this printer. It's a good printer, but so are multiple other printers for the exact same price point, if not cheaper, if not bigger, they're already out there. Yes, it handles its stock prints great right off of the USB stick, which pretty much every printer does. It looks great, but then you start actually experimenting with it. And my experiments just didn't go that well. It couldn't handle its own Pet G with its own profiles that have been dialed in for years. These should have been some of the best prints on this printer. And I know Pet G can be a little bit stringy and look a little oily, but these just were not impressive. And yes, nice fancy silks look nice and fancy. Most printers, even the $300 Centuri Carbon can pump these things out just as good where most people aren't really gonna notice a difference. So do I wanna get three Centuri Carbons, almost four for the price of this thing and just pump little things like this out? And yeah, it can handle silks really well, but so can my other printers. And if you're looking to get this printer for things like costumes and cosplay, yeah, it is a fairly large build volume, but I had weird, these weird color changes and gradients and differentials on it. And I've never had this on another printer. And I don't know if I wanna deal with this type of thing, especially if I start printing on this with ABS and ASA and I'm doing vapor smoothing because I don't wanna go and paint anything. I need this all to be a nice uniform color and gradient so it does the vapor smoothing properly. And it's just, it's a weird artifact I've just never had, and i just not in the mood to fix it because I haven't had to do that on any of my other printers. The machine works, the printer works. If you're gonna get the Core 1, and if you're gonna build it or get it out of box, it's going to work great for you. It is a good printer, but it's hard to recommend this when things like the Bamboo P1S or even the X1 Carbon, which is now $9.99 by itself, is a little bit bigger, and it comes with a camera. Yes, this now comes with a camera that you need to install, but it was kind of the principle of the matter. I don't have any time-lapse footage of any of these prints because this $1,000 plus printer 
didn't have one. $1,200 for this or $1,250 for something like the Bamboo H2S, which is almost double its size and pumps out some of just the nicest prints I've ever seen with features that this thing just doesn't have stock. This is beautiful. So I can't sit here and recommend this machine unless you're looking for a Prusa. A big reason to go with Prusa is because their customer service and their community is absolutely unmatched. And I know, oh, I'm already looking forward to the comments down below. Oh, buddy. The comments on how I can recommend a bamboo over this. Well, my bamboos work. They work out of box and they don't give me the same errors that this thing was giving me. And they are producing better results for cheaper. Right now, where I'm seeing this printer stand is you get the Prusa Core 1 because you don't want a bamboo. For whatever reason, that's totally up to you, but you're in the market for something else that isn't a bamboo or even some of the stuff Creality and Elug is putting out. You're looking at this probably for the community, probably for the customer service. And it does have very, very reliable parts and it is just proven and tested but as far as price point goes and where you're going to spend your money if there's other options in the market i can't not recommend those over this because i just wouldn't buy this if there were other things on the shelf so if you're looking at the core one because it's a prusa because you want it because you know the name get it you are absolutely going to love this thing but i do implore you do a little bit more research and maybe there's something that might be bigger or might suit your needs a little bit better that isn't this and you might be able to save some money and or get two of those printers, sometimes even three, for the price of this thing. It's not a bad deal, especially when places like Best Buy and Amazon are selling a lot of the competition now and you can get warranties with those too so you don't need to send anything back or wait. You can literally just take it to the store, swap it and get a new one. Ask me how I know. Now, not all is lost. I am going to continue to use this printer. I have less than a thousand print hours on this thing. I want to beat this up, especially as we go into the holiday season and we're gonna start putting out the videos like the best 3D printers of 2025. You're gonna be looking at those Black Friday deals, things to get for Christmas and the holidays. This is absolutely a contender tender and I'm going to be testing a lot of machines against this. The new Bamboos, the new Creality's, the new Snapmaker U1 against this. I have a new idea on how to really test the quality against all of the printers. So definitely stay tuned for that and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. And if you guys wanna know more information about anything I covered in the video, comments, questions, or concerns, drop some comments down below. I read all of them and I will respond to as many as possible. And I do wanna thank Prusa one last time for sending me this machine to review and test. And I do hope they see this video because I've always given them my feedback and they continue to send me machines and products to play with and test and 3D print with because they are still putting out a very good machine. I just need to be honest in my videos and I know they understand that. But I've been rambling long enough. I do hope you found this helpful in some capacity, but I think it's gonna do it for this video. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.